Hi, I'm going to walk through setting up a Rails 6 project in Code Anywhere. I'm going to pretty much follow along with the written instructions that are posted on the course website. Okay, we'll start with the projects page from your Code Anywhere account. I, you can see that I have a few projects here. If this is your first time using Code Anywhere, you probably don't have any projects. So we'll start by clicking Create a New Project, and we give that project a name. How about First Rails App and Create? And once that's ready to go, we can then open that project. The first thing you'll need to do when you open a project for the first time is create some sort of connection. So I always just use a container because I haven't really explored the other choices like the GitHub or the Bitbucket or whatnot. And we'll call this container test app. And this container is like a virtual machine, so we have to pick out what software we want installed on it by default. So let's start with Ruby and I'll pick the Ubuntu 16.04. I don't, that was sort of a random choice. I suppose the CentOS one would do just as well. So we'll click create. It'll take a minute or two for that container to be prepared. And then when it's ready to go, you'll see an info page here describing that, that container. And now I'll right click on the connection here on the left and I'll go down to SSH terminal and that will give us the command line that we're going to work with. Unfortunately, as I record this in January of 2020, Rails 6 is new enough that the Ruby containers available in Code Anywhere don't have everything all set up that we'll need for Rails 6, so we have a little bit of updating to do before we can get started. So the first thing I will do is check the RVM version and, and update that. That's probably optional. I don't think there's any big changes here. And you can see we went from 1294 to 1299. You probably don't need to do that. Next, I'll check the Ruby version. We're running on 2.5, so that should be good enough, but why not? Let's go ahead and install the latest version of Ruby, which is 2.7. And again, I'll check to make sure that that installed okay. Okay, yep, so we're up on 2.7 now. And now, the next thing we have to do is a bunch of Node.js updates. One of the big changes from Rails 5 to Rails 6 is that Rails is now managing the JavaScript it uses with a tool called Webpack and the corresponding gem called Webpacker. And those tools insist on a newer version of Node and a package manager called Yarn. So we'll start by checking the version of Node. And we can see that this container, this version of Ubuntu that I selected only has eight, Node 8.12 installed and you need a minimum of 8.16. So what I'm going to do is see what the latest version of Node is now. And we can see here that the latest version is actually 12.14.1. So let's install that. Now I'm going to double check that when we installed it, we actually switched over to using that latest version of Node, so that's good. And now we need a package manager called Yarn. Now Node's default package manager is called NPM, but the people at Rails prefer an, the alternate manager Yarn. And unfortunately, installing Yarn takes a few steps. It's not complicated, but it's not just a simple npm install or something like that. So the first thing we need to do is update our package list so that yarn is in it. And that takes two steps. This curl command followed by the update to a source list. Now 
we'll update the package the package list and then finally we can install yarn okay so now I'll, ru I'll run yarn just to make sure it's there it it didn't complain so now we can start by installing rails we'll check the version that we have we don't have rails at all it turns turns out so we'll do gem install rails and this takes a couple minutes okay and once that's finished we can then create a new app so that's rails new and we'll call it we'll call it test app Okay, and then we have one last step before we can launch the server. It turns out that some of the network forwarding or rewriting that happens to make your development environment and code anywhere accessible from the outside triggers one of the rail security checks. So we need to whitelist the URL that you'll be using. So I like to start by right clicking on that test app and clicking refresh just to make sure that everything's visible here and then we'll go down to test app config environments and open development.rb now if you come back to the tab that shows you the information for that container you can see at the bottom the url that you'll follow to get to your rails server once it's launched if you've closed that tab for whatever reason, you can get it back by right-clicking on that test app connection and going down to info. In any case, what, we, what you'll need to do is copy that URL and then add this line into that development config. Say config.host, and we'll, that's an array, so we'll add to that array that URL. But here's the important thing that's easy to overlook. That URL should be all lowercase. For whatever reason, if you keep the uppercase letters in there, it doesn't work. And then finally, make sure you save the file. See that dot turn to an X up there. Now I'm a little bit paranoid, so I'll do a refresh one more time because it's given me a little bit tr of trouble earlier today. I'll go back to the command line and now we can run the Rails command to launch the server. Oops. Now if you see this, it means you do what I just did and you forgot to move into the directory for that Rails app. So now I'll move into that directory and try to launch the server again. That looks better. And once that server is up and running, then we can come back over to the info page, click on that link, and we are on Rails. So now we have a default shell of an app. Um, the security is all taken care of. The packages are all installed. And we can start customizing this app with some actual content. So now you should be good to go to grab some tutorials or books and experiment around on your own. And we will talk about this more in class. See you then.